This time of year, there's always a lot of talk about avalanche training and equipment, and I totally get it. For anyone riding in the backcountry, terrain and snowpack assessment should be as automatic as breathing. But unlike breathing, you're not born doing it, so you have to learn it. There's another backcountry skill we need to learn that seems to get talked about far less often, and that is first aid. Injuries can happen anytime, anywhere, trail or mountain, and although the What's in My Backpack videos nearly always mention a first aid kit, you hardly ever hear riders talk about learning to use it. Something that might surprise snowmobilers from other parts of the world is that here in Japan, few riders carry much survival gear. Most have zero first aid or avalanche training, and quite a few even ride without radios. Now, I could give you all the special made up reasons why in Japan we don't need to be equipped for backcountry adventure, but basically it's all bullshit. People just don't think about it. And to be honest, I didn't really think about it until we had some accidents last winter that made me realize I was way underprepared for when things go wrong. The worst accident was when a snow biker in our group got whiplashed off his bike by a tree. It was a perfect day and we were only an hour's ride from the road end, but it was a difficult climb through steep trees and getting our buddy out was gonna be tricky. Now, I learned that for various reasons, a helicopter was out of the question, so it was up to us to get him out. Um, I hadn't been in this kind of scenario for years, so I had to think back to my time on ski patrol and figure out what to do. We considered a few different ways of transporting our guy, and eventually one of the locals managed to contact a mate at Iskiria who had a, a rescue toboggan. So while he went to the road end to get that, we stabilized the injury and got ready for the extraction. So of course the, the clock was ticking on daylight while we waited what seemed like forever for the boat to arrive. And this is when you start second guessing. Because I was thinking, am I overreacting being the bossy ski patrol guy? Shouldn't we just throw him on the back of a sled and get out of here? And then the other voice in my head said, stick to your guns, mate. He's 70 years old, the weather's good. So there's no need to risk making it worse just because you want to get home early. Long story short, we did wait for the boat. We got him out late that night. And eight months later, he still can't put on a helmet, so we're glad we did it right. Now, when I say did it right, I, I personally screwed a few things up that day. We should have made a, a much better towing rig. It would have saved hours. But the thing with accidents is you just do what you can at the time and work as a team, and you can't be too hard on yourself or others if it's not perfect. One good thing is that I was carrying pretty much everything we needed to look after this guy. Now I'd like to say this was a result of good planning, but it was just luck. Because a month earlier I'd been at another accident, realised that the stuff I'd been carrying in my backpack for years was pretty much hopeless. So I completely redid my gear. And that was all the stuff that I used at the second accident. The first accident, the one that woke me up to how naive I'd been about being deep in the hills in some hairy situations, uh, that happened when my daughter's friend crashed and took a beating from a line of um, tree stumps under the snow. I had almost nothing with me, but luckily it was only a 10 minute ride to go back home and get some gear. So we put her in the firewood boat and got her down. Turned out she had a fractured knee and was on crutches for a couple of months. Anyway, like the snow bike accident, the one that hadn't happened yet, it was relatively warm and sheltered so we had the luxury of time. Plus the injury wasn't that bad, um, as far as we knew, but it made me realise that if you tweak the dials even a little in the wrong directions, things can quickly go south. For example, when we went back that night to pick up the wrecked ovation, the weather had changed and it was brutally cold. So if Amy's friend had crashed later in the day, it would have been much more complicated to deal with. So sledders, snowbikers, my message is that shit doesn't happen that often considering what we get up to, 
But when it does happen, it becomes really obvious if you're not ready for it. And apart from carrying the right gear, one thing you can do is learn how to use it. That's why over summer here in Japan, I got in touch with the company to arrange a one-day wilderness first aid course for the local riders, all the people we hang out with in the backcountry. And we had a great day assessing accident scenes, splinting legs, stopping bleeding, figuring out how to transport broken riders to safety, and basically just learning all we could from, from some pros. Except that actually, um, none of that happened because no one signed up for the course. Literally no one. Zero. But don't let my pathetic example put you off. Get your riding mates together and take an outback first aid course. It's just interesting stuff to learn. And you'll realize that basic first aid isn't that hard. There's always something you can do to make a situation better, even if it's just not making it worse.